Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending the uh, Thermal Fluid Analysis Workshop uh, vendor session. Uh, my name is Heston Bryant. I'm one of the uh, newer engineers here down at Kennedy Space Center, uh, part of the Launch Services Program, NASA's Launch Services Program, and I am on the uh, Thermal team. And here today we have Bruce Crawford uh, presenting some work he's done with ANSYS for ANSYS um, on high fidelity simulation of thermal protection systems. Um, very excited to see this. This is a pretty important part of, of space flight, I'm sure as many of you know, and it's a challenging problem to address. So, uh, Bruce, uh, I, go ahead, take it away. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's welcome everybody. Here we go. Again, my name is Bruce Crawford. Um, again, I'm, I work as a senior application engineer at ANSYS, specializing in aerothermal and combustion modeling. Today, we'll be talking about the ablation capabilities and ANSYS fluent. Uh, the latest version is 2022 R2. So, so in, what we're going to discuss in this presentation is, you know, the process of ablation with different aero systems and requirements. We'll go through the current modeling capabilities that ANSYS Fluent, you know, to meet the needs of, you know, everybody to simulate these type of processes. We'll go through the new ablation modeling panel available in 2022 R2 and the models available with that. And then we'll show some, you know, a couple validation case models available and that are used in testing. And we'll go through some future developments in the ablation modeling that we're working on. So ablation, why do we need to model this? You know, key thing, ablation is used throughout the aerospace industry for, you know, thermal protection in different systems. For example, you know, re-entry shielding on spacecraft, rocket nozzle cooling, et cetera. But ablation models can be used, you know, to model uh, burning a solid rocket fuel too in, in solid rocket motors. So there's different ways you can look at it. Um, process, you know, is a reaction or a physical erosion of the materials that, you know, transports or removes the heat from the surface of the body, protecting, you know, the body from higher temperatures than, you know, that it, that it can't handle. Um, you can see all the different examples here on the slide, you know, when changing center amount, you know, what what we're, what things that are important to when we model the ablation processes. So looking at this slide here, kind of it's a kind of generalized process, physical process involved in ablation. Very complicated with you know heat transfer, chemical and physical flows as seen in the diagram with all the materials and flow interactions. Um, Again, this could be applied for both external cooling, material ablation, as our own solid recession burning. And also, if you, there's other uh, industries out there that use ablation, but right now we're just going to focus on aero industries for our case presentation. So over you know, the last 20 years, ANSYS Fluent has been used to model different physics that would need to need the model ablation. Again, we we tackle different parts, you know, in you know individual parts here and there, do different things, you know, adding you know UDFs and specializing for special you know projects for different customers. But what we needed to do is trying to take all all the stuff we knew, and you know, and generalize it and put it into a model setup, you know, so people can access it very easily. So the you know, each user wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel. So we could take advantage of what we've learned, how, how to set up, you know, recession models, um, different types of, you know, particles, radiation, everything with it. Um, and that's what the efforts have been over the last year and a half, trying to get this stuff so it's easier to set up, get some empirical models and try to adopt some of our chemical process, you know, models that we have to try to get some structure around and make it easier for setup and also take advantage of our you know meshing and you know deformation and remeshing capabilities in the code to to add that complexity to to the model so here you can actually see going through our set we you know you could turn on the ablation model you know, coupling automatically that kind of switches things on internally. Um, and then once you get that turned on, it adds a, a tab for which boundaries you want to put ablation on. And then you can actually set up um, either 
Viel's law or surface reaction. Um, and also, as as you go down through, you, you can you know see what you needed to set up. Um, if you're going to use super, surface reactions, technically you have to input that in first, so you can be able to select it for that boundary condition. So. Um, going down through the steps, as you can see here, my animations aren't working, so you can see the animations here. And then as you go through this process, we also have the capability now to, you know, have Yale's law set up. We can actually have mass flux from the surface based on some mass fractions we set up either as a constant or we can set up it as expression based on temperature or some other function that will go along with the recession rate that's calculated from, from the empirical model. Um, the surface reaction has that kind of built in, so it's already built into the mechanism for that to happen. Um, so it implicitly calculates the species based on the surface air chemistry being used. Once, you know, all that's set up, you know, you got your boundaries that you can select from. Um, you know, now you got to go through and set up your diagram mesh settings. It automatically gets set up for you, but it just doesn't know which boundaries you're going to be working with. So you would have to go in and select which boundary and find which ones you want to work with, because you could have different settings for different ones depending on the material, depending on you know what, which model you're working with. You could actually have surface reactions with VLs or, or whatever you want to do, depending on how you want to do it. And we have different ways of dealing with the dynamic mesh. We can smoothing, remeshing, we can you know, take advantage of what's there. But default settings should give you some reasonable. Um, there are some limitations. You know, VL's law, you know, was set up to deal with SRM, but there's other empirical models out, you know, numbers out there to do different materials. Um, with the latest versions, as I said, we can actually use mass fluxes into it um, and take advantage of it. But there are, you know, we're not able to do particles as yet that for what we want to do. We would have to use UDF still for that. Um, there is some other, you know, you know, so, so there is some limitations. And there are also some limitations just with the, dens the density-based code with this. We can also switch, depending on the mock number, we could switch back to the pressure-based code, but we have some limitations in number of species we can work with also. I think we're limited to 50 right now with the pressure-based, or density-based code. We want to unlimited with pressure-based. Um, another key thing is kind of shows, you know, a solid rocket motor. Um, the ability to do CHT with the ablation is kind of key because you want to be able to model the, the heat flow through the solid into the structure. And you also want to see how like, the heat gets taken away during, you know, the flow processes. Um, the CHT capability, you know, has been worked on a lot in the code in the last couple of years. And it's, it's shown to work very good with a static mesh and with a high speed, you know, density based code very well. Um, and here we're showing it working with multiple materials, being able to see that, you know, the gradients through it, through, through the rocket. Um, next step is to put depletion onto this. Uh, it works very well static. I've done, started testing now with doing the moving deformation of both the fluids mesh and the solid mesh at the interface and be able to change the meshes on both sides to be able to take a, effect the recession rates and the def deformation going on in the process. Hopefully this will be ready in the pre-release coming in, you know, the next year. Here's a simple, you know, model from, that we used for one of our test cases, and we've been seeing how it works with both VLs and a you know, surface reaction and, you know, doing the different modeling capabilities that we currently have. In this case, you know, it, runs pretty well. Um, we can actually, the mesh I have set up with this with the polyhex core mesh uh, with about 15 layers of fluid, of inflation layers on the boundary layer mesh. It, it runs about 
on my laptop for four cores, I can run 100 time steps in about four minutes. And I get a, get a re decent recession rate. It gets you know, a few millimeters, or, you know, almost a centimeter of recession rate on the surface, just changing the terms to make sure everything's working and testing. But this is running, you know, I can't remember what the Mach number is on this one. But it's a, you know, real high Mach 3. Um, we've actually bumped it up to a higher Mach to see how everything works, too. And it's actually been implemented as one of our tutorials for setup, you know, how to you know, start working with equation uh, modeling capabilities. Again, another ablation is generic um, solid rocket motor. How to deal with that on, on the, the insulation material on the nozzle. You know, this is another one we're trying to work with to see how, you know, we can implement it to work with the CHT and everything, because this is one of our old cases. But again, as you can see here, it's density base, solver transient, compressible flow, ideal. Um, using K Omega turbulence model and you know second order. This one's running second order. We're working on our third order differencing right now to you know, see how things work. So with our you know future modeling capabilities, you know your current blade models. There's the first step, but through you know adding to the framework, we're going to keep building on the ablation modeling capabilities. Abilities and fluent. Uh, we plan on adding more physics for future releases to add the complexity of flows, you know, add it to, you know, to improve the fidelity and the solution. So it's going to be a step by step process of adding the new capabilities, but, you know, moving forward with the development. But the issue is there's not a lot of data out there to do a lot of validation with. So hopefully we can get some, you know, collaborations with universities in the future working on that to see what we can do. Um, but the new features, again, are going to be based on the needs of the customers. We, we wanted to show what, what it is now, what we have, and hopefully start working together to, you know, provide what they need. And again, you know, future developments with SRM, you know, we can out, we're always, you know, trying to, you know, put in more materials, complicated materials, how, how to deal with them, CHT. And we're also trying to get into paralysis reactions, porous media, so we can actually model it, you know, closer to first principles. So hopefully this, you know, help with the, the rocket modeling too. See that. Another, another part of the, you know, ablations we, you know, is trying, you know, this kind of shows from a rocket point of view, but it was a major issue with one of our customers is how to model the, you know, ablation and the startup process in the SRM. Um, but, you know, how to, how they have no way of testing for this. So we were setting up some uh, proof of concept models with FSI to be able to model both the solid you know, fuel, the casing, and, you know, the gap to see if we can simulate what was going on during the startup process with this you know case here it's trying you know trying to find out where the hot spots are going to be and then as we add we're going to add the ablation modeling to this to be able to do the recession rate properly to the models this can also be reversed to the other side of doing re-entry vehicles and, and be able to do that type of um, modeling So again, with the two, you know, two ablation model setups, so if you know, between the VL's law model and surface reaction, again, this is capable to take advantage of all our meshing capabilities and doing 2D, 3D, however you need to do it for your modeling capabilities. It's been tested with, you know, what we have to be able to take advantage of that. You know, ablation model automates the dynamic mesh coupling setup, so it makes it easier for the user. It doesn't, you don't have to go and try to find everything Everything gets set up automatically and you just put in the key um, data points to make everything work. Um, again, some of these models are limited in capability. You know, you know VL's law is limited in a way. But if you have surface reactions, we can take advantage of it up to a certain amount of species to make things work. Um, but again, we need, you know, looking for some more 
you know, validation cases so we can actually push it to the limit and see what we could do. Again, all this stuff runs on, you know, multiple CPUs and we can take advantage of, you know, different machines to make this work. And hopefully, you know, with the fridge developments, we can really extend, you know, really beefing up the fidelity for uh, this type of model. That's all I have for today. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, that's really, really exciting stuff. I think some of those uh, post-processing views we got there, uh, I was very impressed with uh, just to see that coming out of this and, and be able to have all of that multi-physics packaged in one one toolkit is really impressive. Uh, yeah, I know from, from my personal new, but but uh, pretty in this realm experience, it's getting all these things to hand off successfully and, and capture the physics is really challenging. So uh, yeah, this is really impressive. I, I have the one question in the chat. Oh, by the way, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them over there. Um, but I was wondering that you, you had an ArcJet um, facility on one picture. You had a little schematic of that. Mm -hmm. Is that is that uh, Ansys's ArcJet or is that testing you're doing somewhere? No, we no we don't have any uh, testing capabilities internally. We we try to work with universities at our companies to help us with the validation, so we can you know use their facilities and use their data to validate our models. Um, that's that's how we get everything to work. We try mm -hmm. to work with them on that yeah i've seen uh there's there's a lot of people who try to do tests in those sort of controlled environments and uh from just kind of from experience some senior advice i've been told that the best way to get the data is from free flight uh stuff uh, because of the surface pressure it's, it's hard to create those free flight conditions um but yeah no, i know that's uh that's probably where some of that data that, that you're looking for would really be helpful well, to have those validation cases. Yeah, we've been working with UTA and uh, Colorado and other places that have been working on some of this stuff with their own arc, you know, jet stuff. So hopefully, I'm hoping to start working with other universities. I had you know good some good meetings this summer with at a conference that are doing some uh, ablation modeling at you know at uh, mm -hmm. Minnesota and Kentucky. Hopefully, I can start those processes up so we can get more data and try to couple with their codes and seeing what we can pull in that's not going to, you know, be, you know, a problem with uh, protected uh, yeah, information, so. but make, make everything work. Um, but key thing is I'm trying to take what we have and try to slowly merge it together so you can just take in a model and put in the data that you want to get everything to work the way you need it. So you don't have to think about it as much. It's just there, set up, and just pick and you know, choose what, how, what, to what fidelity you want to get to. Um, the other stuff I didn't cover in here is we've been, been doing a lot of work with, uh, you know, air, you know high-speed air chemistry. So that mm -hmm. can also be integrated in here too. We have a two-temperature model built in now. So as you go, we can actually add that stuff as we go downstream. That's sh stuff I should have added in here too. Um, just to give you know, gives you some more fidelity. Gives you, you know, I keep using that word, but it adds more capabilities and adds more, you know, information to what's going on, really going on in the physics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mathematical fidelity. It's not just mesh fidelity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. We we have a question here. Uh, can the ablation solver be added directly into mechanical, or is it a combined fluent mechanical only? Can, can, currently, everything's built into fluent. Um, so we do all the solid and fluid, you know, modeling in there with CHT and fluent. Can we couple with mechanical? As you saw there, we did the FSI. That is coupled with mechanical, and we do we do go back and forth between the fluid and solid solvers on that. We do have a internal intrinsic FSI solver in fluent that I'm still testing. I I'm, I don't condone using it as just yet, but it could be lead to a way of doing this stuff and go faster too with doing internal FSI. So we're, we're trying to see which way ways to better to do things. But um, I know I have, have had that asked before, how, can we do ablation directly on mechanical where we put all the information, but it's, we have to model the, the flows 
information on one side to pass it to the other. So it's actually has to be coupled in a way. Yeah, it makes sense uh, that the, yeah, mm -hmm, the, the incident heat depends on the surface and the flow. Because yeah. there's a lot of 1D models out there where they you know, try to do that, but again, it's going to change on the aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's going to vary. Yeah, I have another question too. The so the the layer that's receding, um, it looked like from those post processing plots that it was really capturing a two D or three D action um, within the the receding material or the the ablating material. Um, is that is that two D three like there? It's it's not just one D. That's not one one D. It's all two D three D. Um, I didn't have it on here. I actually have a capsule in three D showing the ablation, and it's 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 uniform but you can see it in a in a 3d form on the bottom and so you see how, how everything's you know going um all the cases i run are all 3d models even though i'm only showing 2d on the side <laughs> just to make sure everything's working in 3D. Mm -hmm. yeah that's fantastic capability i'm uh pretty envious of that <laughs> so, and but we can also reduce back to 2d if we need to i've run some stuff in 2D, but I try to do all my testing in 3D and make sure everything works. Excellent. Especially with the boundary conditions. We, you know, we fixed a lot of the three stream boundary conditions to really help with robustness and speed. And that the, the chemical species that you said you can address up to 50, that seems like plenty. Uh, have you ran into many cases where that's limiting? Um, Yes, when I was trying to do some other combustion modeling, I was trying to use a full finite rate mechanism for uh, uh, methane, and it kind of got limiting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but again, there's no re real reason to do that in 3D. We have the capability with ChemKin and stuff to uh, reduce the mechanism and have it you know, validated for the flow regime we're in and test things and use reduce mechanism for what we need to do. Excellent. Yeah, this this is great. I wish I I wish I had more questions for you because uh, I said, I mean I'm still all fairly new to it, but th this really seems amazing. Uh, so I dig it. Um, we have a few more minutes. If anyone has uh, some questions, uh, otherwise uh, I, I, we're, we're just going to hang out. Uh, we have uh, an overview of Viratech uh, coming up next at two o'clock. So. Any spare time? Anyone can get some more questions in? Or oh, here we go. Um, other plans to add ablation features to mechanical. I think I was on that other question. Um, not that I, I know. We're trying to do the FSI problems to put direct stuff in the mechanical. I don't have control over that side. I'm a fluids guy. Um, I would have to see, and it would have to be a big uh, want from industry for us to do that. Um, but if there's, if it's there, you know, if there's a, a big need, we could probably push to add that there. But again, that's going to not solve the fluid side. It, it'll be like 1D models to do that on the mechanical side. I think we're better off, you know, running the simple models in fluid, fluent, which I saw that one, you know, 3D model only took me minutes to run for a few seconds, you know, for, you know, 100 time steps, which is, you know, about a second worth of uh, runtime, it it uh, should give you get the answers. Then we could transfer it over to mechanical, and or make a table of that information and put it into mechanical for you. So that's how I would do it. That would give you more more a better uh, boundary condition for your mechanical calculations mm -hmm. and not leaving anything out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great, Bruce. Thank you. I 